Hero Lake is Intel's revolutionary new processor for mainstream desktop, featuring new P cores and E cores, disaggregated tile based 3D for various packaging, an integrated NPU for AI acceleration, a next generation N core, DLVR power rails, and so much more. In this video series, I have a look at the Arrow Lake performance tuning and overclocking capabilities. I have a look at the compute, memory subsystem, and data fabric. In this video, we're having a look at the Arrow Lake next generation Uncore and die to die data fabrics. NGU stands for Next Generation Uncore, and it is the successor to the Uncore we know from previous generations of Intel processors. The NGU fabric, or sometimes called subsystem, includes several subcomponents, such as the network on chip, NOC, and UFI bridges. On Arrow Lake S, NGU overclocking is essentially NOC overclocking. The NOC fabric is the primary communication bridge between the various components on the chip, such as the memory controller, the CPU cores, the graphics, and so on. The clocking of the NGU is very similar to any other device on the Arrow Lake CPU. We have a reference clock that gets multiplied by a ratio to get the eventual operating frequency. The 100 MHz reference clock is derived internally from the SOC PLL. However, it can also be clocked with an external clock generator, providing the reference clock for the SOC tile. This PLL can be linked to the CPU PLL when run in synchronous mode or work independently if you run a synchronous mode. You can configure the SLC BCLK frequency between 40 and 1000 MHz. In the ASUS ROG BIOS, you can configure the SLC BCLK frequency in the AI Tweaker menu by first setting AI Overclock Tuner to anything else than Auto. You can switch between asynchronous and synchronous mode by adjusting the BCLK mode option. The reference clock is multiplied by the NGU ratio to achieve the final clock frequency. The NGU ratio starts from 4x, the default ratio is 26x, which yields a 2.6 GHz operating frequency, and the maximum configurable ratio is 85x. The voltage regulation for the next generation Uncore is very similar to that of other devices on the SLC tile. The NGU has its own VF curve, which is defined by up to four VF points. The first three VF points are factory fused, and the last point is mapped to the OC ratio. Unfortunately, that's as much as we can gather regarding the default VF curve, as it's not that easy to separate the NGU SVID request based on the VCCSA behavior. Advanced voltage offset is available for the NGU. As I said, there are four available VF points, three of which are fixed to a specific ratio. The final VF point is mapped to the OC ratio, which is your manually configurable NGU ratio. In theory, you can set a voltage offset for each of these VF points. The final OC ratio's base voltage will be the manual set adaptive voltage. Unfortunately, the NGU VF points are not available in the ASUS ROG BIOS. To safeguard the processor, Intel has imposed strict voltage limits for the NGU. That voltage limit basically means that the NGU cannot request a higher voltage to the Intel CPU power control units. By default, the voltage limit for the NGU is 1.122 volt, but this can be increased to 1.219 volt under ambient conditions. When the temperature is below 10 degrees Celsius, you can further increase the voltage limit or disable the limit altogether. In the ASUS ROG BIOS, you can configure the NGU voltage limit via the AI Tweaker Max Voltage Limits submenu. The external VCCSA motherboard VR or MVVR powers a number of parts on the SLC dialet, including the NGU. Unlike the compute IP, the parts of the SLC dialet are not powered using DLVR, so the power delivery is identical to previous architectures. The voltage configuration of the VCCSA voltage rail is rather complicated. Because there is multiple domains that request voltages from this voltage regulator, the eventual output voltage will be the highest requested voltage across all of these connected domains. 
Based on the NGU VF curve, the NGU requests an operating voltage from the VCC SA voltage rail using the SFIT protocol. There's two ways to configure the NGU voltage, in adaptive mode or override mode. In adaptive mode, the target voltage is mapped to the NGU OC ratio. This is the manual NGU ratio set in the BIOS and matches the NGU's VF.4. The usual rules for Intel's adaptive mode apply to the NGU as well. However, I won't dig into the details here because in practice, you'll always run at the highest NGU ratio anyway. In the ASUS ROG BIOS, you can configure the NGU voltage in the AI Tweaker Tweaker's Paradise submenu. Fortunately, there's a second way to approach Paragate mode. Ignore the SVID stuff and program the VCC SA voltage rail directly over PM bus. That basically means that we have direct control over the VCC SA voltage output. This approach is a very traditional way of overclocking, whereby you set a fixed output voltage and then use the appropriate VRM load line setting, if available, to reduce the operating voltage in higher load scenarios. In the ASUS ROG BIOS, you can configure the VCC SA voltage rail in the AI Tweaker menu by configuring the CPU system agent voltage in manual mode. From a practical tuning perspective, you'll want to set a fixed VCC SA voltage that ignores the VF curves of the various connected IP domains. Typically, you'll use something like 1.3 volt. That gives sufficient headroom to overclock the NGU to 3.5 gigahertz. The performance scaling isn't that amazing though, as increasing the frequency from 2.6 to 3.5 gigahertz only improved the Y Cruncher 2.5B score by 1%. However, decreasing the frequency to 1.5 gigahertz reduces the performance by about 6%. D2D stands for die to die, and it's the interface between all the tiles on our Arrow Lake CPU. The Arrow Lake S package has four die to die connections, but we can only overclock the SOC to CPU die to die interface. The clocking of a D2D is very similar to anything else on the CPU. We have a reference clock and we multiply it by a ratio to get the operating frequency. The 100 megahertz reference clock frequency is generated internally by the SOC PLL. However, it can also be clocked with an external clock generator providing the reference clock for the SLC PLL. You can configure the SLC BCLK frequency between 40 and 1000 MHz. In the ASUS ROG BIOS, you can configure the SLC BCLK frequency in the AI Tweaker menu by first setting AI Overclock Tuner to anything else than Auto. The reference clock is multiplied by the D2D ratio to get the ultimate operating frequency. As I said before, on Arrow Lake, we can only overclock the SOC to CPU D2D. The D2D ratio starts from 15x. The default ratio is 21x, which yields a 2.1 GHz operating frequency. And the maximum configurable ratio is 40x. The frequency can only be set at boot and cannot be changed in the operating system. The D2D interface isn't really designed to be a very dynamic part of the Arrow Lake package and therefore it is powered by a static voltage rail. The external 0.77 volt VNN AON voltage rail powers a number of internal voltages, including the D2D interfaces. Despite it not being referenced that often, the VNN AON voltage is pretty important for Arrow Lake CPUs. It is part of the voltage multiplexer for many IP blocks including the cores and the ring, typically serving as the floor voltage in power saving scenarios. I don't suggest increasing it above one volt since it provides little additional benefit for overclocking and performance. In the ASUS ROG BIOS, you can configure the VNNAON voltage in the AI Tweaker main menu. The overclocking headroom of the die to die is pretty good. I can easily reach 3.5 gigahertz with the default 0.77 volt VNN AON voltage. For higher frequencies, it's hit and miss. It's pretty easy to spot if the voltage is an issue. The debug code will show 00. zero. Don't worry, however, with one volt VNN AON, you can reach higher frequencies, and if you're really lucky, 
maybe even max out to 40x. I strongly discourage trying to undervolt the VNN AO and voltage rail because it powers so many different parts of the Aerolig S processor that it quickly can cause stability issues. I managed to set the VNN AON as low as 650 millivolt before the system locks up. Despite the overclocking headroom though, the D2D doesn't make that much of a difference in the real world performance. With 7-zip, I saw less than 1% performance difference between 1.5 and 3.5 GHz frequency.